Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. From Istanbul. Our plan today is to have kind of a touristy day in the city. There are so many cool sites we want to see. There are these rainbow steps that we want to check out. There's the Galata Tower, which is right near where we're staying. Yeah, we've kind of showed you guys a little bit previously, but we want to get up close and personal. Yeah, and some other stuff. And we're going to eat some delicious food if we can find a good good spot. But first, we've come to probably the most recognizable landmark in the city. Yeah, we've... you didn't already <laughs> recognize it. <laughs> yeah, it is the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, also known as the Blue Mosque. Even though this is a very popular tourist attraction, you can see the hordes are starting to come. It is also still a functioning mosque, and the mosque itself was constructed from between 1609 to 1616, so it is quite old. Yeah. We're in kind of this main courtyard area right now, and the place is absolutely stunning, but you can see behind us, they're under quite a bit of construction. Yeah, it's a bummer. So they got this uh, ugly gray thing up here, and then at least this kind of has a picture of what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> I like when they do that. It's better than just looking at a gray tarp. Yeah, I feel like it's always our luck. Everything's always under construction when we come to visit, but yeah. that's okay. That means it'll be extra beautiful when you come. But there's still a bunch to admire out here, but we've spent enough time getting photos and just wasting our day. So <laughs> we're gonna head yeah. inside and check it out. So you have to take your shoes off to go in. You also have to, the women have to get a headscarf, but they yeah. give it to you for free. They're so. free here. Yeah. We are inside the mosque right now. It's very massive. We're trying to be a little quiet, but there's no sign saying you can't talk. So yeah. <laughs> or at least going to whisper a little bit. But it's called the Blue Mosque because of all of the blue tile work that's on the inside. There are tens of thousands of these little guys that make up all this really ornate and intricate tile work that's really striking when you come in. So when you walk in, it actually feels kind of small and cozy until you look up and then you realize that the ceilings are huge and they are so beautifully decorated. This is the uh, prayer area and you can see that there's a sign over there that says the vis visitors have to stay behind this line. It's pretty cool looking though. Yeah. This is actually the first mosque I think we've ever been into. Yeah, yeah. actually it I didn't is. really think about that. That's cool. Yeah. I'm kind of sad that we're not here close to prayer time because I don't think we could be in here when it happens, but they sing over the speakers and I guess pray over the speakers and they say it's a really interesting feeling to be right here, right next to it. Because you can hear the prayers throughout the city, yeah. but to be right here when it's happening would be pretty amazing. So when we walked in, I was really surprised. I was like, oh, this is kind of smaller than I thought. But then we realized, I think they're doing construction on the inside as well. So you can still see some of the ceilings, which are crazy high, but a lot of it is covered at the moment. Yeah, but, but it's really nice looking scaffolding. Yeah, and they put tarps that mimic the ceiling. So you still get a feel for it and you can still see the greatness of it. If it's a colder month, make sure you wear warm socks because my feet are freezing. I was only in there for like 20 minutes. Yeah, even though it's carpeted, it's really cold yeah, in there. Yeah, well the doors are wide open because so many people are going through it. So it's a little drafty in there. <laughs> Transportation here is super easy. We've got our handy uh, Istanbul cart that we just picked up this morning. You can pick it up from any of the machines at the spots where the trains pick up. But uh, I think it costs like six lira for this, and then you can load it up, and it's yeah. like five per trip, I think. Five, yeah, five lira. lira per... Which like is a like buck. a one USD. Yeah. yeah, it's not so bad. So far, it's pretty easy. We've stopped for our late breakfast. We came back to a Privato Cafe. We're in love with this place, and this time we went all out. We got their traditional village breakfast, which they serve all day, which is good for us because it's noon now. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got this gigantic spread here. We've got a spot right in front of the restaurant. We actually set up the tripod there so we can get some photos. <laughs> there are so many awesome spots like this to get photos in Istanbul. You just have to walk around and be like, there, there, there. There's some fruit over here. Uh, cheeses, butter, uh, Go, these are... Gozum, gozum, gozume? <laughs> no. Turkish crepes, sorry. We're yeah. not sure how to pronounce those. And some other goodies, olives, eggs, and uh, this is, is some fried little, stuff, like, halloumi. Pancakes and potato pancakes, yeah. I think. And over here, we've got a bunch of uh, dips and some olives and all kinds of interesting stuff to try. And oh, yeah. you guys saw in our last one, they make their this bread here. 
and we got more of it, and I'm gonna be so sad that this is the last time we can eat it. Yeah, this bread is so freaking good. It smells so good. There's guys. like cinnamon or something in there. Oh, it's just too good. And their coffee here is absolutely delicious. Oh, yeah, we've already kind of dug into that, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is my kind of breakfast. Just being able to go from like dish to dish. You got a little sweet, you got your savory. Mm -hmm. These olives are some of the best olives I've ever tasted. And we've got fried halloumi here, which is absolutely delicious. We're in love with halloumi, especially fried halloumi. Yeah, I think everything's it's real was good. It in Greece when we had it first. <laughs> yeah, I think then so. It's so squishy. It's like one of the coolest and yeah. tastiest. Yeah, and the flavor is just great. Mm -hmm. This is actually our last day in Istanbul. That's why we really wanted to go back to that uh, cafe because it's been our favorite place. But we're actually right down the road from Galata Tower, which uh, we've been just seeing as we've been walking around the area. The history of the tower is really interesting, which I'll tell you about in just a bit, but we're gonna go to it and I think you can actually go up to the viewing observer or to the top of it. This is the tower behind us, and uh, there is a huge line. Way longer than <laughs> I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, so get up early. We decided to go to the mosque first today, and by the time we got here, this is what it looked like. But we're still at least gonna give you a little bit of information about it. The Galata Tower was built in the 14th century, making it one of the oldest towers in the city, and also one of the highest. When it was originally built, it was a watchtower to help keep the area safe. And then it became a prison, and then I believe a fire tower, and now it's just like a museum. You can go up and see the view and the history here. Fire tower is basically just a watchtower specifically for fires, for I fires. guess. For fires, yeah. yeah. Which was a big deal back then, you know? Oh, I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you had phones to be like, hey, there's a fire, <laughs> or an alarm to go off, right? <laughs> no, but the cool thing about this tower is pretty much wherever you are in the city, even if you're across the river, you can still see it. Yeah, it's really it's neat. Really it's up on the top out. of the hill, yeah. So these are the rainbow steps. Now the story of these steps is very interesting. They were created in 2013 by a retired forestry engineer. And he came out here one day, he painted all the steps by himself. And then I guess the government didn't like it. They ended up painting it gray, but it had already caught on. Everybody loved it. So the people painted it back. But nowadays, I don't know if you can tell, but they actually replaced the paint with tile. So I guess so it would last longer. They're still a bit dingy. We saw some photos where they look pretty pristine, but they're still super colorful. It looks like they're doing some construction over here. So they've kind of destroyed this half of the stairs and then put up some uh, scaffolding stuff. So that's a shame, but a lot of construction in this city, man. <laughs> so much. I guess a lot of people thought that the stairs represented some form of activism or gay rights or something like that. But the person who created them said that really all he wanted was to make people smile. He wasn't really trying to make any statement other than that, no, which is kind of cool. It, yeah, he did. <laughs> What you got here? <laughs> We're just doing a little photo shoot and we found a prop. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sweetest and cutest little prop in the world. Yeah. He acts like he's not interested and then I gave him a little pat on the head and now he won't leave me alone. He's like perched on my leg. <laughs> he's so cute. So just down the road from those rainbow steps are these rainbow steps. I was looking it up in a hurry, so I'm not sure if these were the original ones or these were painted after and they've just kind of like been sitting here, but you can see that uh, these ones are actually painted and the colors kind of worn off, but I'm sure they look pretty spectacular when they were first done, don't you think? Oh, for sure, yeah. So now we've come back across the river, uh, just down the road from the Blue Mosque where we were this morning. We are going to head to what is considered one of the oldest malls in the world, the Grand Bazaar. We're going to do some shopping. No, we're not. We're just going to look. <laughs> Bazaar is one of the largest and oldest covered markets with over 4,000 stores. And I actually read that it's ranked the number one most visited tourist attraction in the world, which is insane. It said almost 100 million visitors a year. Jeez, thank it's goodness incredible. it is so huge. Otherwise, this would be super overwhelming. Yeah, it is pretty dang crowded though, but that's part of the fun of it. We 
really wanted to get a photo in front of this lamp store back here, but when you walk up to it, there's a bunch of signs that say no photo and no video. So I just went up and I was gonna pay the guy to take a photo, but he said, eh, just take it real quick. So he was super nice. True legend. We'll put the photo up on the screen now so you can see how it turned out. I was pretty happy with it. There's a lot of stuff in this bazaar. You can find carpets, of course, bags, candies. The lamps. Jewelry, stores like this all over the place. All kinds of stuff. I will say though, people try to get you to come in, but they're not super pushy. Yeah, I expect them to be, on you. Yeah. I expect them to be a lot more forceful. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised by that. No, it's a pretty nice experience. Yeah, if you just like say no thanks and walk by, then they let you go. Turkey, they have this really funny way of serving ice cream. They actually have their own type of ice cream. They do this whole production when they try to give you an ice cream cone. And I guess because it's so sticky, they're easily able to like steal it from you. It takes you about five minutes to actually get your, your cone. And I'm so glad that I am not the one up there trying to order ice cream right now. I tried to talk her into going and doing it, but <laughs> we really just don't want ice cream right now. <laughs> it's probably worth it just to get that whole treatment done try. with you. Although I've heard it's not that great it's just more the experience is wonderful yeah but if we have any uh, turkish people viewing right now you should let us know if the ice cream is any good in the and description below because yeah, we haven't tried it to try yeah. we came to the seven hills hotel which is just near the uh, Blue Mosque. You mm -hmm. can see it over there in the background. We have an outstanding view of it. Uh, you have a view out onto the river. You can see over to the other side of the town where we're staying. Probably one of the best views in town. So definitely recommend checking this place out. The drinks are a little expensive, of course. Everything you're kind of paying. a little expensive. Yeah, you're but... paying for the experience, but totally worth it to mm -hmm. get at least a beer or two. And if you had a super sunny day, not a cold, dreary one like today, it'd be even yeah. better. Last time we had this was in uh, Greece, but I just looked on Wikipedia and it said the country of origin is the Ottoman Empire. Pretty excited to try it again. Oh, are you? Because <laughs> it smells just as uh, not good as it did last time. Yeah, it's it's like a anise flavored, which is, we always associate that just with Jaeger, which, which brings back some old college times. Yeah, doesn't really bring back good memories, but we're here, so I wanted to try it. Yeah. Ooh, it's served nice and warm. It bites you. Ooh, tastes like licorice. Oh, tastes no. like black licorice. Does it? Ah, not my kind of drink, but I tried it. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna like it. <laughs> I don't like it. All right, we'll stick with the beer. I'll drink this. You can drink the beer. Okay, thank you. <laughs> We're just heading home, home and we found a little donor kebab place. Yeah! <laughs> I think we've yet to get donor kebab since we've been here, yeah. which is kind of crazy, but perfect for our last night. We've got our food, we've got a couple beers. Um, we are gonna head home and pack because uh, this is our last day in Istanbul, yeah, or in Turkey. Tomorrow we head to Berlin, then we're off to Vienna, then Slovenia, then to Dublin. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button for more videos like this and also hit the like button. That really helps us out. But I think we're gonna head home and crash out and pack. We will definitely be coming back to Turkey, probably in warmer months, because it's yes. been a little chilly. You couldn't keep us away if you wanted to. <laughs> yes, we'll be back. All right, good night, adventures. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>